There are two temptations that you will have to resist once you become a true owner and reach stage six of your founder's evolution. First, you must resist the temptation to rush the process forward. As we've moved through this series, I've tried not to talk too much about previous stages, but here and now it is important to revisit stage five. Many founders I speak to in stage five are ready to get out. They can see the freedom of stage six. They feel the pain and discomfort of learning the new skills needed to succeed in stage five. They lament the good old days of the earlier stages, and they just want out. And so they do what they want to do. They rush things along. They find the first decent CEO to take the reins. They flash a peace sign, and they walk out the door. And that's a problem because what they've done is walked away from something instead of stepping into something. You only want to step into stage six when you no longer see it as an escape, but an opportunity to take on your next challenge or start a new journey. And so before you ever find yourself in the position of asking, now what do I do? Ask yourself the question, what do I want to do next? Second, you must resist the temptation to go backward. You'll remember from the previous series that the triggering event that transitions you from that chief executive to the true owner is hiring a new chief executive. But hiring a new CEO the right way is a much bigger transition than most of us would expect. Not so much the title or the day-to-day, -day, but for the role of chief visionary, no one else has ever had the primary vision for your organization other than you. And once you hand that over, that level of leadership, you will typically feel a pretty large void. What do you do with your new ideas, your new innovations, and your new inspiration? Quickly, you will feel like a sponge that has more water in it than it knows what to do with. There'll be a backlog and a buildup that will tempt you to wield your owner's card and to take back control of the wheel. Don't do that. Please don't do that. It will only hurt you and everyone else involved. If you're going to be the visionary, that's fine, but that means stepping all the way back into that chief executive seat and not only having the vision, but seeing it come to pass. And that can be done. We've seen it happen. Steve Jobs did it with Apple. Michael Dell did it as well. It can work exceptionally well if you pair the rights of the role with the responsibilities of the role. But most of the time, and seriously, most of the time, if we're not honest, that's not what we want to do. We want to swoop and poop. We want to blow in with our brilliant ideas and we want to blow out just as quickly. And when we aren't careful or if we aren't honest about what we're doing, guess what happens? We unknowingly end up blowing past stage five, back to stage four, even stage three. And interestingly enough, that's what Mario did in 2000. And the cost of going all the way back to stage three is that to get back to the freedom of stage six, you have to succeed in stage three again. You have to succeed in stage four again. You have to succeed in stage five again. And so if you can resist these two temptations, you can experience more joy in stage six than in stages one through five combined. And now that we know what not to do, let's take a look at what you can do to put you on course to reach stage seven and become a visionary founder. And that's what we'll do in the next video.